Hello friends, so what is a circle? First of all, think of different objects around you which are in the shape of a circle. For instance, if you think about a wheel, a wheel is a circle. A clock is also circular in shape. Coins are circular. Key rings are also circular in shape. So these are the shapes around you which look, these are the objects around you which look like a circle. Now think of it. How do you define a circle? So for that, you should notice that when you want to draw a circle, you use an instrument called compass. And how do you use a compass? You put the one end of compass fixed at a point and then Keep the pencil end of it at a fixed distance from that point and keeping that distance same, you make one revolution and the shape you get as a result is a circle. And how do you define it then? So the circle is basically a collection of all the points in a plane which are at a fixed distance from a fixed point in the plane and then that shape that you get as a result of it is a circle. Now that fixed point is basically the center of the circle. So this is basically the center of the circle and the distance from that point O to any point on the circle is called the radius of the circle. Now what are the other important points here in the circle? So if you look at the plane which contains these points on a circle, it divides all these points divides the plane into three parts. One is the point which is outside of the circle. So any point at a distance greater than the radius of the circle is external to the circle and that's an exterior point. And any point which is equal to the radius of the circle, that is on the circle. And any point which is less than the radius of the circle that's inside the circle. So, if you look at point O, point O is at the center of the circle. So, it's inside the circle. The, the radius, if you, if you consider another point P, which is on the circle, the distance here is equal to the radius. And so, that point is on the circle. And say, if you have a point Q, the distance between the center and the Q is greater than the radius. So that point is outside of the circle. So a circle divides the plane into three parts. One is the interior of circle, another is the exterior of the circle, and the third is the circumference of the circle, that is on the circle. Now if you look at it, the if you take any two points on a circle, say A and B, and if you join the two points on the circle, then this line that we have just drawn is called the chord. Now if you notice, you can draw a similar line passing through the center. Let's call this x, y. If you notice, this is the longest line we can draw connecting any two points on the circle. And given that it's passing from the center, this is a special chord. This chord is called a diameter. 
So diameter is basically the longest chord of the circle. Okay. You also notice that any chord of the circle this divides the circle into two halves. So if you if you draw a fresh circle here with a center at O and any point on the circumference P, another point on the circumference Q, and then you join these points, the chord that you get here is called the minor arc. The, the shape that gets drawn here is the minor arc and the shape that I'm drawing right now, this is the major arc and then this shape is called the minor arc. So that's all we have for this video. We'll see you with the next part. So now let's test our understanding of whatever we went through a few minutes back. So the first question here is, the center of the circle lies in exterior or interior of the circle. So if you draw a circle, the center of the circle is the fixed point. If you remember the definition, the fixed point at the center of the circle is O and all other points are at a fixed distance from this point. So a center of the circle is definitely inside the circle because it's the distance of the center from the center itself is zero basically. So it's less than the radius. So it's inside the circle. So a center is in the interior of the circle. Next question is a point whose distance from the center of the circle is greater than its radius. So suppose we have a point Q and we have a point P. So if you notice OP is equal to the radius of the circle and OQ is greater than OP. So OQ is greater than OP. So any point which is greater than, which is at a distance, which is greater than the radius of the circle lies on the exterior side of the circle. Okay. So which is the longest chord of a circle? So, so what is a chord? So if, if you, if you draw two points on the circle, say X and Y. So suppose these are the two points and if you join those two points on the circle, that's your chord. And let's draw two chords now. A, B. So if you see, if you draw any other chords on this circle, they are always less than the chord that passes through the center of the circle. And what is the chord that passes through the center of the circle? That's called the diameter. So the longest chord of a circle is the diameter. Okay. Okay. So the next question is an arc is a dash when its ends are the ends of a diameter. So if you look at this arc, so every chord, if you look at the chord, it's, it's forming an arc here. So let's draw another circle. So if you look at another circle, every chord forms an arc. So let's assume that O is the center of the circle. And let's take a point X on the circle and let's take a point Y on the circle. And XY is a chord passing through the center of the circle. So it exactly divides the circle into 
two halves any any point any line which passes through the center of the circle and connects the two points on the circle divides the circle into two halves so what is this called this is called the semicircle so any arc which is formed by the diameter is this is called the semicircle and if you look at if you look at this chord here then like we mentioned in the next uh, in the previous video the shorter arc is called the minor arc and the longer arc here is called the major arc in case of a di a semicircle the major arc and the minor arc are of the same size so the this arc where the ends are the ends of a diameter that is called a semicircle okay the segment of a circle is the region between the arc and the chords of the circle so if you if you if you look at this circles for instance and suppose this is the center and then this is one chord that we have p q so if you notice this divides the circle into a into two half into two parts this is called the minor segment and this is called the major segment so is the segment of a circle is the region between an arc and chords of the circle a circle divides the plane on which it lies in three parts so points which are less than at a distance of less than the radius of the circle are inside the circle points which are at a distance equal to the radius of the circle are on the circle and points which are at a distance of greater than the radius of the circle lie outside the circle so basically it divides this the plane into three parts interior out exterior and on the circle so three parts okay so let's look at the next question so a line segment joining the center to any point on the circle is a radius of the circle so a line segment that joins center to any point on the circle is the radius of the circle so this is true a circle has only finite number of equal chords that's not correct you can draw as many chords as you can passing through the center of the circle in other words you can draw infinite number of diameters so this is false if a circle is divided into three equal arcs each is a major arc so if you if you make a circle and say you make take three points here and you make three arcs so pq is one arc rs is one arc and qr is the third arc what this says is if a circle is divided into three equal arcs so what do you see if you draw a chord between two points on the circle the smaller arc is called the minor arc and there is a longer or a larger arc which is called a major arc but here the question itself says that the circle is being divided into three equal 
equal arcs. So these are basically equal arcs. So none of them is a major arc. So this is a false. Now a chord of a circle which is twice as long as its radius. So a chord which is twice as long as the radius will definitely pass through the center. Right? Because the end points of a chord always lie on a circle. And any line passing through the center is equal to twice the radius. So that's basically the diameter. Right? So this statement is true. Now, what is a sector? So if you are drawing a circle with a center O and then you have OP as a radius and then OQ is another radius, the part of the circle that is there between the radius and this arc PQ is called a sector. So when this says a sector is the region between the chord and its corresponding arc. So this is the chord and its corresponding arc is this. The sector is the region between these. So then this is a true. A circle is a plane figure. That is correct because a circle is basically a, located in a two-dimensional plane. So this is a plane figure. So this is true.